Hey guys, it's Marshall from Going Gear, and today we're going to take a look at the Jetbeam RRT21. This light is really similar to the existing RRT2, but it has the Cree XML LED instead of that Cree XPG LED, so you get a little bit better illumination as far as the area that it's going to light up, but it has a similar size reflector, so you're not going to get quite as good of throw or distance that you get with the RRT2. But a really cool feature that they have on here, instead of the ring that has the few detents and then the strobe for the different outputs, this one actually has that uh, similar ring to the current RRT0 where you actually get the infinitely variable outputs plus the strobe and we'll show you that here in a little while. Another nice touch is that they are putting clips on these lights now. So you have the removable clip that just pops off if you want it to pop off. Still the same nice design touches. You've got that orange peel reflector down in there. Here's your switch on the back. Just let me show you the LED. There's that uh, Cree XML LED down in there. Show you the other stuff that you get in here. You've got a lanyard that can attach on there. There's the lanyard attachment point. Get a lot of people asking about where to attach them. The little cord slides in there. And then you've got a couple spare O-rings, a spare button tail cap cover if you need to replace that if it wears out for any reason. And then the silica gel that Jetbeam is so fond of <laughs> these days. They've been using a lot of that in their lights. And then the uh, warranty information. So that's the packaging. Here's the light. You've got an RRT2 as well, just so you can see them side by side. You can see different styling on them, definitely. We'll zoom in so you can see them a little bit better. And then, of course, the LEDs. You've got that much smaller Cree XPG on the RRT2 versus the larger XML on the RRT21. You can see similar size reflectors, so what that's going to do uh, with the larger LED in the XML, like I said, is it's going to kind of get rid of some of the throw, but you'll see that a little bit better when we go outside. So we'll put that back over there. Okay, so the light is powered by either one 18650 or two CR123s. So we've got an 18650. Go and throw that in there. Before we do that, got to pull out the silica gel. With all the current jet beam lights, they always come with silica gel inside, and we've had several people tell us that their lights weren't working, but they just didn't pull out the packet of silica gel. So make sure you pull that out if you buy any of the current generation of, uh, of jet beam lights. I don't know, I guess they were get some, getting some complaints that the insides of their waterproof lights <laughs> were coming wet. I have no idea why they're putting silica gel in everything now, but it's in there. Battery, got one of the trust fires that we sell. People always ask what we recommend. That's what we recommend. That's what we use in all our display lights. That's what I use in all my personal lights, and they work really well and are relatively cheap. So, got the battery in there. There's the switch on the back. Lightly press that switch when you actually have it in one of the illumination modes. <laughs> actually, let me show you that again real quick. You have this ring, and when you're in the spot between the strobe and the regular illumination, it's actually off. So when you turn the light on, or you attempt to turn the light on, it's not going to come on. It's like a little lockout feature, kind of nice. But when you go past that and you have the switch depressed, you can see you go into the strobe. That's what you get in when you go all the way to the left. Go slightly back to the right, you go into that little detent spot, and then go past that, and that's when you get into your variable output. Which is really nice, because you can set it to exactly what you want. Just turn the ring, and it'll go to the level that you want. And like with pretty much all of the jet beam lights that have the uh, the rotary ring and the, the night cores as well, you can get it to go pretty low. Not quite as low as the ones that take the XPGs, but it's still pretty darn low. Great for up close illumination. And of course, you just crank it right up to get the higher output for longer distances and stuff. So again, the interface all the way to the left is going to be your strobe. And then to the right is when you get your variable output. And the switch... Lightly press it, momentary, click it all the way for constant on. So that's the interface of the RRT21. We're going to go ahead and take it and the RRT2 outside just so you can see how they compare side by side. So let's go ahead and go do that. Okay, we've got the jet beams outside. Let's go ahead and compare them to the big 4D mag light and see how they do. Let's try out that mag light first. There's a little bush, 15 feet, tree out there at 100 feet. All right, let's try out the jet beams. We're gonna do the RRT2 first, since that's the existing light. 
and there it is on high. You can see the difference in the amount of light coming out of that thing. A whole lot of light. Pretty concentrated there at the hot spot. There's 100 feet. Obviously it can do further than that and you'll see that when we do the distance video. I'll show you the different outputs real quick. Alright, let's do the, uh, the 21 now. There you go. You can see why I like the XML LEDs. It lights up a wider area at once. I personally find that a lot more useful than throw because we don't really have a lot of wide open areas out here. But uh, you can see it's not as concentrated, so you're not going to get as bright of a hot spot as you do with the RRT2, but uh, you light up more at once. So we'll do them side by side. I have the uh, 21 on the left, 2 on the right. And you can see the difference in concentration on them. You'll see that a little bit better when we do the distance shot, so let's go ahead and do that. Actually, before I do that, I want to show you the different outputs on the 21. I'll just ramp through them real quick. You see, you see how it does at the different levels. And of course, like pretty much any light, the lower levels are going to be great for up close tasks. And then when you need them, you can bump it up to the higher levels. All right, let's do a distance shot. All right, we've got the 100 yard distance shot for these. Got the big 40 mag light. Let's try out the mag light first. Here's the top of my house at about 50 yards. Pine tree in the front yard at 100 yards. Doesn't really make it out to the pine tree. Sort of does, but not really. Let's try out the jet beams. Here is the RRT2 first. You can see, uh, even though it's September, we haven't gotten a lot of rain recently, so our normally green pine tree is kind of brown. <laughs> but it's nice because it gives you a different idea of the colors. So brown and green all around it. But you can see the RRT2 does just fine out to 100 yards. It's actually a little bit over 100 yards to the top of that tree. But the RRT2 does just fine. Shine it around a little bit. All right, let's try out the 21, see how it does. There you can see, lights up a wider area. And this kind of distance actually does just as well as the, uh, as the RRT2 it looks like. But it lights up a wider area at once. Shine that around a little bit. And of course the house at 50 yards does no problem. So we'll do them side by side. I'll have 21 on the left, 2 on the right. There you can see the RT2 is just a little bit more concentrated, but you are lighting up a wider area at once with the 21. So there you go. That's the RT2 and the RT21. For right now, they're still making the RT2. I don't know how much longer they're going to be making it. But uh, you can get them both from us as of the time of when I posted this video at GoingGear.com. And if you have any questions or comments, you can reach us in the comments or at GoingGear.com. And if you like the videos, be sure to subscribe. We put out a lot of flashlight videos.